Hello. In the last video, we talked about how we can use a normal vector to define a plane, and how that's going to help us on the road to discovering the equation for a plane. So in this video, I wanted to talk about how, based on our previous understanding of a plane, we can find the normal, uh, the normal vector to a plane. So to do that, let's just, we have three points here, and I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give these three points a specific location in space. I'm going to say this one is at, uh, well, for, okay, I'm going to say this one's at x0, y0, z0. I'm going to say this one's at, well, let's start with this one, x1, y1, z1, and that this one's at x2, y2, z2. Just, you know, keeping things relatively simple. But we have those three points, and these define our plane. So now let's start thinking in terms of vectors. I'm going to introduce two vectors here. I'm going to inter introduce a vector here. I'm not sure if these colors go together super well, but I'd like to have a little bit of contrast. And a vector here. And I'm going to call this one vector b. Uh, let's make it lowercase. Vector b. And the other one, actually, I might get the color all wrong. I'm going to call that vector a. So we have vector a and vector b, and they both originate, uh, for our sake, at x0, y0, z0. So now, what we're essentially trying to do is find a, and I know I drew this in a slightly inconvenient way, but we want to find our normal vector. And I'm going to say that that's a vector C. I'm going to say that it goes right up out of our origin point, and that's our vector C. And that is our normal vector to the plane that we're looking for. And I know I went right through the coordinates there. I tried to avoid that, but uh, not very successfully. So how can we start dealing with these? Well, I, I was talking about how we start want to start thinking of these things algebraically, so let's break down these planes more algebraically. How can we define plane A and plane B? Well, that's relatively simple. Plane A, and I'm going to write this in the uh, unit vector form. Plane A, and if you're not familiar with any of the vector stuff, that's really it's really important to know here. I recommend going review it. You know, just normal notation of vectors. We're going to have to be doing with dealing with uh, matrices and stuff. But uh, I'm going to say vector A is going to be equal to x1 minus x0 in the x direction plus y1 minus y0 in the j, well, in the y direction, but j, so unit vector, and z1 minus z0 in the z direction. And that, hopefully, that seems relatively reasonable. We're just finding the differences here. We're just creating a vector that's based on, you know, we have a, we have a change in this direction, we have a change in this direction, we have a change in that direction. That's what creates our vector. And this is a pretty standard form for a vector. Let's do it for b now. b, on the other hand, is going to be, it's going to be, ha uh, ha, x2 minus x0 in the x direction plus, uh, sorry, not x, that's all wrong, y2 minus y0 in the y direction and z2 minus z0 in the z direction. So how are we going to find c based on this? c is perpendicular to our plane, which means it's also perpendicular to those two vectors. And one other thing to point out, as long as these two vectors are not basically collinear, they don't point in the same or opposite directions, then if we find a vector perpendicular to those two, it will also be perpendicular to the plane, right? Because there's no other vector here that could be, you know, I'm not going to go into this super far, but hopefully it makes sense that as long as these, these two aren't lined up, 
when we find a vector that is perpendicular to the both of them, meaning we have perpendicular here and here, it's going to be perpendicular to all of the vectors in that plane. And that, I think that's pretty visually clear. And it's really only important that you get that for now. We don't need to go deep into the math of that. It's just basically you know, defining planes and vectors. Uh, but that's, that's simple enough and not what we're doing right now. Uh, so all we really need to do here to find our normal vector of the plane is find a vector that is perpendicular to these two. And I'm going to box these because these are going to be important. This is going to be very important, and I'm going to mess up unboxing because boxing is hard. I'm not a boxer. Okay, so we're dealing with those. We want to find C. Now C, what's one way to find something that's perpendicular to two vectors? Well, what is the cross product of vectors? Recall the cross product, the cross product, or is usually denoted as a multiplication sign. Uh, back when we used when we made multiplication signs look like x's, you know, back probably more in elementary school. Um, but a cross product is usually denoted thus, say, you know, a crossed with b. The what a cross product does is it multiplies the portions of those vectors that are perpendicular to one another and oh that's it's an annoying little pop-up one second yeah remind me tomorrow why don't you uh it multiplies the portions of those two vectors that are in that are perpendicular to one another so like you know if we had a well i'm not going to go deep into the cross product but the point the only important part of the cross product here is the result of a cross product will be a vector that is perpendicular to both of the things cross product cross-produced, I suppose. And you're probably very familiar with this if you've done any physics and dealt with torque, but when you take two, when you take two vectors, uh, and I'm going to call this E and F, and you take E cross F, you're going to create another vector, and you know, I'm, I'm not going in any order of the alphabet here, I'm just choosing letters h and say h will be perpendicular to the both of them h is going to be popping out of the page here kind of like this and that'll be perpendicular to the both of them so the important thing to take away here is that a cross product creates a i can leave this here the cross product creates a vector that is perpendicular to the two vectors that you're cross product cross producing that's a weird word to say uh, and you know the other important parts of the cross product are based on how long the cross how long that resulting vector is and remember that doesn't matter right because what a cross product is really doing is multiplying the portions of two vectors uh, that are perpendicular to one another but that's not important because we don't care about the length we just want the direction and we know that if we take the cross product the resulting vector will be perpendicular to both so that's exactly what we're going to do if we take a and we cross it with B, we are going to create, that is going to be equal to the vector that we are coveting, vector C. And it doesn't matter how long C is, all we care about is that it's perpendicular. And that's why we can just use the cross product there freely. So now comes to the part where we actually have to worry about how exactly we evaluate a cross product. Uh, and the probably the easiest way to do this is um, evaluating a matrix. And this is when it gets into the area that's slightly less visual and kind of less obvious. But in the next video, I'm going to be going into exactly how you'll evaluate this cross product between the vectors that we have defined here these here, and how exactly we are going to find our vector c. And then in the video after that, hopefully we can wrap up and find the standard equation of a plane. Thanks for watching.